What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are going to dive deeper into some Gen 5 torque tuning. In particular, we are looking at the driver demand table, so stick around. <music> Hey everybody, I want to thank you as always for stopping by the garage. If you have not already subscribed, click the button down in the corner. Worst case scenario, you are going to learn how to tune. We generally specialize in third, fourth, and fifth gen GM stuff, but we have gotten off into the weeds on some Mustang stuff, and eventually we will get around to doing Dodge. There is just a laundry list of video topics that need to be done that you do not want to miss out on, though. And a lot of this stuff will carry over. There's specific uh, things that are uh, not necessarily named the same thing from one brand to the other, but the theory is a lot, uh, you know, the same on par in between the different brands. So keep that in mind. Uh, but today we are talking specifically about Gen 5 torque tuning, in particular the driver demand table and what the driver demand table does. The driver demand table is the closest thing that we have to a link to direct power from the accelerator pedal to the engine. There's a lot of math that happens between point A and what we'll call point like Z. And there's all these different parameters in there based on the torque modeling system as we go down the line that are going to make adjustments. And some of it has to do with your airflow tuning, some of it has to do with your spark tuning, a lot of it has to do with the virtual torque tables which affect both the airflow and spark delivery to the engine to accomplish uh, the uh, max power that we're trying to accomplish. And then there is the driver demand table, which is literally our request from the ECM for power. We're saying, hey, as we give it this much pedal, we want this much power. And so if you have not properly adjusted your driver demand table, you cannot request enough power. But it's, it's a little bit confusing, and we're going to take a look at it right now. Okay, hopefully you guys can see me all right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a driver demand table and put myself kind of down in the corner, hidden away as we talk about the table that I put up on the side over here. And in particular, we're looking at a 2015 Silverado first, and there's a reason behind it. There's two different setups. Technically, there's four different setups that there can be on a driver demand table. If you see right away at the top of this table, it has RPM or VSS, which is vehicle speed. Your driver demand table rows are going to be, our columns are going to be broken up by one of these two parameters, and it's real quick to ascertain which one it is. Just look at the top. If it looks like speeds, it's going to be speeds. You're not going to have just 200 RPMs on this table. You're going to have 200 mile an hour or 180 mile an hour. If it looks like RPMs, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So, you know, those are RPMs. I see a lot more vehicle speed than RPMs. If you've seen one with RPMs, by all means, comment down below. Let me know what platform it was on, which vehicle it was on. The other thing that we are going to see is uh, the actual numbers that fill out this chart are going to be one of two numbers, and they say it is either engine torque or axle torque, but don't be mistaken. These numbers, for some reason, never directly add up to anything that I can see on any loggable parameter. So if you go out there and log all of your engine torque stuff, and you map them out, all the different ones, the delivered, predicted, actual, uh, you know, all of those, and you map them against a graph that matches this, they generally don't match up. And so even though this one goes down to about 325 foot-pounds of torque or so, uh, that does not necessarily mean that it will max out at 325 foot-pounds of torque because there might be an area over here where it's only calling for 61 or 70 foot-pounds of torque, but your engine can deliver almost twice that. I've seen it multiple times, even on stock setups, and so it is not a calibration issue. It's almost as if this is some kind of uh, variable or multiplier that goes in as part of the torque model equation to output torque or request torque from the engine. Knowing that though, we do know the higher the number, the more torque that it is asking for. Let's go ahead and take a look at a, I believe, 2018 Camaro SS that has the axle style. Okay, right away you can tell that something's a little bit different on this. The numbers are ginormous, and this is because it is axle torque, which is a multiplication through the transmission. These are not realistic numbers, uh, but uh, they are calculated numbers, and I'm not sure if this is what would be considered at the pinion or at the ring or where this is at. Maybe an engineer can chime in there. But once again, we do know that the higher the number, the more power that we are requesting. So how does this come into play? Well, you've got to keep in mind, these tables can be very, very tricky to mess with. If you get carried away, you can actually make the car very undrivable, if not unsafe. 
and let me explain to you why. As you see on the left-hand side, highlighting your rows, you have your accelerator position. And it's generally broken down, and it might be pretty uh, broad down low and then get more granular up above, say, 75 or 80 percent, where there's more uh, spots to make changes. And there's a reason behind that. Down low, we want smooth transitions. It's kind of like that chart where if you were to drive out what your throttle uh, body should do, you want a smooth area down low, then as we get up into the higher power, you want to ramp up real quick, but you want drivability down here at the bottom. This map will uh, kind of follow that mentality. Let's look at the 3D version of it. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, now that we have a 3D version of the driver demand map opened up, you can kind of see how the curve is really slowed down in the green area, uh, very gentle on the lower speed, so you're not getting a lot of abrupt throttle changes with accelerator input down at lower speeds. As you get up higher in speed though, you'll notice that the uh, changes can be a little bit more dramatic and then as you get more or as you get closer to wide open throttle it definitely ramps up in the end this is something that we need to keep in mind whenever we are making adjustments to this table to make sure that we are not overrunning our requested throttle so as we go back over and we look at the actual numbers we need to make adjustments to reach our peak torque We've already exceeded what we're seeing on here, and between this and the virtual torque map, if we log our predicted engine torque versus our, our predicted engine torque command versus our engine torque, we're seeing that we are holding back our engine torque because it tries to exceed that predicted engine torque command. Whenever that happens, we pull spark and we close the throttle body. Uh, it's pretty abrupt, and you can easily see when it happens if you were to log both the accelerator position, make sure it's the non-SAE version, and the throttle position. Because you will see the accelerator position and the throttle position follow each other as you ramp up, then you'll get to a point where you exceed the amount of torque that the engine is being asked to produce because of these tables, and your accelerator will continue up, and your throttle might bump up for a second, but it'll start going the other way and closing or holding steady as you get to wide open throttle. Uh, that is a clear indication that your torque tuning is off and it can be in a couple different spots. The main ones being uh, driver demand, max torque, and then the virtual torque tables. But now that we've got this one opened up, let's take a look at it and what are we going to do to make adjustments? Well, as I said, you can really screw up the drivability of your vehicle or make it extremely dangerous. If you were to come in here, this is a position or a situation that we do not want to use uh, interpolation because we do not want to draw a straight line. If you were to make this curve straight, the drivability goes to hell and you're going to be dangerous. So we generally want to ignore any of the accelerator positions below about 75%. Underneath there, you're not going to need any more power adjustments because you would be surprised how long it takes to get beyond 75% then into wide open throttle. Uh, whenever you're putting around, you might be at 30 or 40% just kind of doing normal driving. So you don't want to make adjustments to those or it'll cause your, your vehicle to be jerky and give you some, some fits and starts that way. So we're going to focus on 75% and I like to do it a specific way. I like to go in on the very last row, multiply it by 10, then take the very last two rows, multiply those 10, and then take the very last three rows and multiply by 10 and see what where we're at. Let's go ahead and do that now and see how it looks. Okay, so we've shifted up the last row by 10%, then the last two rows, then the last three rows by 10%. And so now we have a curve still, and it is not a linear curve, and we are getting up to 500 foot-pounds of torque requested on wide open throttle. This is probably a good starting point to go out there, test, pull some logs, see how your uh, throttle body is responding to your accelerator inputs. But remember, you're going to have to get above... 74% in order to see any change to how the power is delivered. Below that, it's still going to be like stock, and that's not a bad thing. Now let's talk about the different tables. As you can see here, we have multiple maps, including a reduced power map, which is what happens whenever we go into limp mode. Maps A, B, and C are all different based on platforms, and it's not what you would think it was. Even though on a pickup truck there is a tow haul mode, it does not actually change the map that you're on in this situation because that is more transmission based than it is engine based. On the cars, on the other hand, Camaros, Corvettes, stuff like that, there are a sport mode and the normal mode, and if you look, the sport mode is more aggressive down there at the end like we've already talked about. That's a good starting point to break over into your normal mode and then you can bump up your sport mode if you want to have the more sporty throttle response. So keep that in mind. 
Okay, real quick, before we get out of here, let's talk about the peak torque map. If you go back over underneath general, under torque management, uh, you are going to see the peak torque. And this is literally the peak torque that torque management is going to allow the engine to make. So this has to be increased uh, in you know, relation to any modifications that you do. But do not get carried away with this. There's no reason to just max this thing out. In fact, that will cause you issues. But try to keep it within reason. And you can also kind of use that uh, mentality of looking at your log, seeing if your predicted engine command is holding back your actual engine torque, and then make adjustments to this. So if we do a couple mods on this, we're gonna bump up, in particular, you can probably bump this whole table up, but we wanna do it above, say, 2,000 RPMs because that's where it's gonna be more important that we're getting onto it. But this should not cause any issues if you just bump the whole table up by, say, 10, 20% as needed based on your platform. Pretty straightforward on that one, so. Well, that's it. I mean, there's not a lot as far as driver demand and peak torque goes, but, this is just one small part of a bigger puzzle that we have to dive into. And the big, hefty, hard part is just virtual torque, how to properly log all of these parameters, how to interpret the logs. Uh, I can do it just by looking at it, but being able to teach you how to do that, that is something that has stumped me. I can scrub through it and kind of explain what I'm looking for, uh, but it's not a good way of teaching this process. And so I'm still working on a way to properly explain and teach the process. The numbers don't always make sense, but that is what happens whenever we're dealing with a lot of calculated stuff. None of this is like it was back in the day where these numbers were direct. Now, some of these will line up and you will start seeing uh, where things like the peak torque will max or generally match engine max torque. There is a parameter out there that will show you the max torque that you've hit in the last couple seconds or whatever it is. And that will often line up to that peak torque map. So you can do your own graph and build it off of that peak torque table, make it look like the same columns and rows, log the engine max torque, and then log it into that graph. And it should, for the most part, fill out what your peak torque looks like. It's something fun to do, but not necessary. Uh, but you can also go in there and do that and see if you are hitting the limits of that map and if you need to bump those up a little bit. So we might do a video on that later on, but for now, I just want to kind of get you exposed to some of the things that we're going to adjust moving forward as we do torque tuning. As always, if you have any questions, which I'm sure some of you are going to because this is an interesting topic with a lot of opinions, which if you have any opinions or you have any advice, please send them my way because I am trying to think of the best way of teaching this very convoluted, uh, somewhat complicated uh, methodology of tuning your virtual torque tables properly so you get the most power out of it. And there will be a couple people that I've already worked with that will chime in here, I'm sure down in the comments and tell you that this has been one of the biggest uh, game changers on their tunes because they've gone out and gotten a tune somewhere else the torque tables have not really been touched at all, and it has been limiting the amount of power their vehicle makes. And you can see it on the logs. It said, logging that accelerator position versus the throttle position is just eye-opening sometimes. And you should never have a situation where you're at 100% accelerator and your throttle is maxing out at 35%. So keep that in mind. Uh, as always, uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the likes. The likes are what really drives the channel. Thank you for sharing this. Remember, you can share it quick and easy by uh, the address www.tuning101.com. And as always, check out the links down in the descriptions to merch, the Patreon for tuning assistance, all that fun stuff. ABT, always be tuning. And thank you for stopping by the garage.